Hi, this is William from New Zealand again. I thought I'd put up this video to just um, give a bit of advice for people wanting to connect and configure their Nissan Leaf battery modules. Now, the, the question comes with connecting in parallel and in series. This, this lot I've got here, as you can see, are a whole lot of parallel stacks that are then connected in series. The question comes with the charging and discharging amperage and with so many the Nissan Leaf module themselves is is reasonably heavy with its connections but it's not designed for hundreds of amps it's better suited when load can be shared when you especially when you've got them in parallel as I've got them like this showing I've stacked up a huge stack here, which in these particular I've got, I think there's 20 in these stacks. So there's, it's a stack of 20 modules and each module, each, each of the modules has two cells in series. So effectively each stack is really two stacks of parallels that are each four volts. So if you pile yours up, I guess you would want to Divide the number of cells you got by seven because you need the seven stacks seven times the eight volts nominal to kind of give you 50 something volts for a 48 volt system. And then obviously pile up in multiples of seven as high in a stack. And if you then want to add on later, like with these I added on there and put a bit of a joint initially we I think we had about 14 or 15 and we increased it to about 20. So in this I've got interconnects between the stacks if you can see I've got three in these because if you take an ammeter and measure the current when you're drawing a load sometimes with the charging my charging goes up to probably about 230 amps and then discharging sometimes goes up to 120, 140. But if you took an amp meter and you measured across the interconnects of these, you'll see obviously with the three interconnects here, the amperage is divided by three. So when I'm drawing 100, if you put an amp meter across these three, it's about 33 amps each. And likewise, these that are stacked up, 20 of them, each of these stacks themselves when you're drawing 100 amps and you've got 20 modules stacked up, you basically, each of the modules are only basically offering five amps each because they they all they all sort of helping push. So much like, I guess, 20 people pushing a car, if there's 20 of you and you're all standing behind the car, you each got to share the load. You're only kind of pushing 1 20th of it. As with the connections at the end, <laughs> You can see with the connections here, I've got a number of connections going off. Although these are a, a 35 square millimeter cable and this particular lot I've got five because that's sharing loads incoming and outgoing. Um, so, you know, it's the load, it, it's very, that's why it, the load's so well shared here. Nothing even works up to more than an idle, even when you're going at 500 odd amps. Um, so I guess if uh, if you had more batteries in or even more interconnects it just makes the load um, less on each connection point. The center bar in in these modules of course that's only for balancing purpose so um, <clears throat> although I've got a batterium on this one as you can see that's connected at the bottom the batterium has only got capability of balancing about two amps so it's kind of not even not even a tickle <clears throat> on this deck. So, but it's um it still tries to do a bit of balancing. Um, and in this way, if you're drawing so lightly, and the joints are hardly working, yeah. As they say, your cables can never be too big, or if, the bigger the better, because obviously they they don't. Carrying a lot of load is always better and they don't get hot. So, and it's much safer. And yeah, this is, um, it's quite simple as long as your joints are good, your buzz bars are good. And 
I've got this um, Perspex cover covering this one. You can see it from a bit of an angle. And the reason I've got that is obviously I'm trying to keep it um, airtight as possible to also keep it from from the copper tarnishing. And I've got a built-in heater underneath. There's a bit of a tunnel under the battery of this whole construction. So, and I've got a little cupboard heater, one you put in a warming cupboard. And just when it gets to winter, I set it and it keeps it to about 20, 22 degrees inside without having to warm the whole room. And yeah, that's, um, it's, it's just as simple as that. Okay, bye for now.